Hello, and thank you for joining us to talk about Insights to Action, ORI's service offering translating member data into dollars. In part one of this two-part video series, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we mean by systematic listening, the power of unstructured data mining, and why this AI-driven technology combined with ORI's service offerings can bring some pretty substantial results for associations, and I will share just a couple of examples of that. So first off, what do we mean by systematic listening? Well, as the hexagon in the middle of this slide would suggest, there is structured and unstructured data. The structured orange top part of the hexagon, um, that's things like net promoter score, customer satisfaction score, transactional data that might be in your AMS. Anything that fits in a nice Excel spreadsheet, rows and columns, that's the type of data we've typically analyzed and been able to make good use of. What we're talking about with systematic listening is augmenting that structured data with all of the unstructured data that's out there estimated at roughly 80% of customer feedback and customer commentary. And the types of unstructured data that we're discussing are in the teal oval on the right-hand side. So it could be uh, commentary on your online communities. Perhaps you have a higher logic community forum. It could be chat, email, uh, open-ended feedback in surveys. That's an area where we see a lot of data lurking that previously very hard to mine, expensive to go through and manually code. And that's the exciting part about what we're doing is being able to leverage technology and use AI-powered market-tested technology to analyze that data that was often very siloed across the organization and therefore uh, inform association leadership's decision-making. The thematic analysis here in the middle, you know, understanding what members are talking about, if you think about how people share feedback or share ideas, it's rarely one nice concise thought one sentence, one distinct idea. It often comes in lumps, right? And that's what those clouds are supposed to represent. Several different ideas, sometimes related, sometimes not. In a member feedback survey, someone might say, I really enjoyed last year's conference, but I'm finding your website clunky. And oh, by the way, I would like a new uh, learning module on X, Y, and Z. Those are three very distinct things. And what this graphic is representing is our ability with this technology to take those three distinct ideas, parse them into individual buckets or uh, categories, and then be able to examine the sentiment and emotion around those ideas. But I'll get into more of that in a minute. Essentially, Insights to Action, which is ORI and Clara Bridge's combined offering, um, allows us to listen everywhere, so across the top, you see all of those different sources, omnisource capability to bring in whatever conversations, whatever data that you have. We want to be able to analyze everything and then bring it back to you in a way that ensures action. So whether you are a C-suite uh, team member, you are running marketing, you might be in charge of events, chances are you have different information needs and we can cater to those individual needs by designing the feedback we give you to match those priorities that you have in your job. So the questions we're answering, the kinds of uh, very high priority uh, research questions folks have, who are our centers of influence who are recommending us, what do members need that we're not providing, what topics engage members the most and why. That's a really important one in today's environment of going into online virtual conferences. We've got to provide the most value we possibly can so what topics are gonna to engage people? Uh, what challenges are facing members where we could help and why aren't members renewing? So that's the essence of what we're going after here. And what's the possible ramification of that? I mean, why do this systematic listening? Why even think about something like insights to action? Well, every organization we've ever worked with, frankly, is either looking to get costs down or revenue up. In the case of associations, a very high priority is typically improving member experience, strengthening those relationships, and increasing retention. Just to give you one example, we have a client that's got about 50,000 members, 
$300 per membership, and they're at about a 60% retention rate. They want to be at 65. They'd love to be even higher than that, but they think it's reasonable to go from 60 to 65. And that five percentage point bump represents $750,000 in revenue. So the implications can be very significant. Once we really not only understand um, those member needs and have that better relationship, we want to encourage them to buy new and different things, right? If they typically only ever come to the conference, how can we get them involved in some of our educational offerings, et cetera? Third area here I see a lot of conversation around is understanding market demands and member needs. We have a lot of CEOs and executive directors who will tell us they don't think they truly understand a day in the life of their member and they need to, to be able to develop new offerings that are gonna sell. Last but not least, area that we're addressing through this systematic listening, taking all the data and translating it into insights is to be able to gain competitive advantage over rivals, right? Make sure that you've got the offerings and the kind of relationships that's going to make it hard for your competitors to, to pull your members away. Couple of example client outcomes. Uh, we've worked with a professional medical association where a very large portion of their budget came through their educational offerings. Um, they wanted to gain visibility into sources of frustration for both students and instructors. This was particularly important because the instructors um, are very valuable and in scarce supply. So they needed to be able to slice and dice the data in a way that they could hear the voice of the student and the voice of the instructor by mining all of the old um, LMS surveys, and they had a ton of them sitting in file folders where the open-ended feedback had never previously been utilized. And we did that in order to pinpoint sources of frustration to increase that you know, member retention, uh, make sure the customers kept coming back in terms of the classes and increase market share. For the National Trade Association, slightly different scenario, they wanted to uh, really see into their higher logic community forum data in order to be able to meet diverse member needs. And we were able to take um, a couple of different forum uh, commentary sets and quickly identify patterns in terms of member needs. What did the small companies need as opposed to the large companies uh, by type of company and therefore be able to develop new targeted offerings. So just a couple of examples there of um, what it looks like in uh, applying this new offering and translating those insights into action. In terms of how it works, I'll just quickly go over this. We are always happy to share a demo and to go into more detail. But the reason we partnered with ClaraBridge is because of their proven technology. Their uh, advanced industry-specific algorithms have been used in every industry you can think of for uh, over the last 12 years. The sentiment analysis is applied at the clause level. I don't want to get all technical and geeky, but let me just put it this way. If you take some of the cheaper, less advanced systems out there, they will tell you thumbs up or thumbs down on a whole paragraph of text or perhaps a sentence. And to the degree, as we talked about earlier, there's very different ideas being shared in each clause within a sentence. You wanna make sure that the analysis and the sentiment is being attached to the proper themes within each clause. Last, but by no means least, level of effort detection. Uh, ORI, uh, we are big proponents of tracking level of effort. We do not believe customer satisfaction and net promoter scores are enough anymore. Level of effort is essentially um, a mechanism for measuring whether your members and your customers are expressing frustration or are having difficulty with working with you. Was your website clunky? Uh, was it difficult to sign up for something? Anytime somebody starts expressing high levels of effort, it's a leading indicator that that individual will not be a customer with you in the future. Well-proven customer experience uh, insights, and we are able with ClaraBridge to look at that level of effort within the language specifically. So we're going to listen, analyze, and act by assigning numeric scores to feelings, right? In the both sentiment and effort, we're gonna use a scale of minus five to plus five, and we're gonna start putting structure around language, right? We're gonna start giving it scores. What does that look like? Let me just give you a quick example. 
because sometimes this seems almost like uh, somebody referred to it as hocus pocus. So let me let me show you how it actually works, right? This is member feedback from a conference. What the technology would do is go through with the natural language processing and deal with any acronyms, abbreviations, misspellings, emojis, right? A lot of systems fail right at that point. They can't handle that. Um, then the, the, the uh, algorithms break out and identify themes. So we know that there's a conversation around sessions, expo hall drawings, panel discussions, those are the things in blue. And then very importantly, as I mentioned earlier, we're able to then attach some sentiment, how are people feeling about sessions and the expo hall and the panel discussions um, and assigning minus five to plus five there. So that gets aggregated up across all the different respondents, across all the different data that you have. And then we look for what's the biggest theme? Where's the big, where are the biggest problems? Okay, I'll start wrapping it up here. Um, I mentioned before, omnisource analysis. So very important that we gain a holistic view and pull in all of the data that you have. And we can do that using this platform. We can quickly identify negative experiences that matter. In this particular case, this is a healthcare example, um, but you know, identifying outliers and areas of concern, in this case, likelihood to recommend is along the left axis, uh, sentiment is along the uh, horizontal axis, and we wanna look in the red box because that means low sentiment, low, low likelihood to recommend. So these people are not happy. The big blue circle around billing tells you they're not happy about billing. That doesn't help me unless I can drill into that, which we can, and to be able to drill down and find out the why behind the what, okay? If we know billing's the issue, why is billing the issue? And what can we do about it? And in this graphic, you'll see that the billing summary turned out to be the, the biggest issue when we drilled into the text and looked at the subcategories, the summary, and in fact, in this particular case, um, it was a confusing summary and people were being presented with bills that looked like they owed more than they did. So clearly something you want to address quickly and we are able to identify that and do that. A couple of last thoughts. Uh, we never want to lose sight of the original commentary, the verbatim feedback, right? So uh, for those that think this does sound a little magical, we can always drill in and go, no, no, it's real feedback and here it is and it's attached to the person who said it we have all the details and the structured data around those individuals, and we can look in and see why the system is saying this is such an important topic in the dialogue. So from raw data to actionable insights in about eight weeks, people usually say to us, so this takes a long time, right? And the answer is no, nope, it does not. Once we can get at your data, leverage all those data sources along the left-hand side that we've been talking about, then with your strategic objectives in mind, um, be able to identify pain points and opportunities, look at the sentiment, look at the level of effort, check out what they're talking about, what they care about, and bring that back to your uh, leadership team to take action. Again, depending on who is needing this information, the type of analysis we're gonna do and the pain points we're gonna focus on is gonna vary, right? So that's it. I want to thank you very much for um, sharing this short journey with us. If you're in any way interested in a demo or hearing more, we're happy to schedule that. If you would like to uh, go on and listen to part two, I will be sharing a little bit more about specific client case studies. But thank you again for your time.